This right here is a replica Tyrannosaurus Rex skull. All right, pretty menacing looking. They're still not sure if it's a meat eater or a plant eater. And the reason why I say that is because in one specimen, at least one specimen, they found chlorophyll um, in between its teeth or on its tooth. So interesting, isn't that? And I'm going to show you a Tyrannosaurus tooth. All right. And this is, again, these are replicas. The cost of the originals is, well, something like this would be astronomical. The tooth is several hundred dollars. I just haven't stepped up to that. I have got uh, megalodon teeth and I've got woolly mammoth and mastodon teeth, but uh, this is a nice size. And that is what a Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth looks like. It is uh, taken from an actual T-Rex mold. All right. So that's, uh, that's pretty big, pretty big for a tooth. So Maybe something to help with digestion. There you go. Now I'm going to show you a couple of dinosaur tracks, but I'm also going to give you some, I don't know if you guys have seen it in Yahoo News or any of the news agencies out there, but there's been a drought obviously throughout around the world and things are starting to get uncovered, including the dinosaur tracks that are down in the Paluxy River in Glen Rose, Texas. You saw it on the national news, those big, huge, deep uh, dinosaur tracks. Um, Sorry, referring to your shirt. Very good. Um, and we're heading down there September 3rd and uh, 4th, September 2nd and 3rd. And we're going to go down there to, in part, uh, see if there's, uh, and there's been a lot of rain. So some of them has been covered back up. We're going to see what's down there, what we can uncover, what we can see, and what we can report on. So we'll be down there shooting video for TikTok and our YouTube channel. <clears throat> For those of you out there tonight who have seen us before or for the first time think, you know, I'd like to know more about dinosaurs. I'd like to know more about apes, aliens, or Adam. And I hope I'm not, hope I'm not um, uh, being too premature here. We want to entice you to get our newsletter. Now, the reason why I ask you to join our newsletter, and here's the reason why before, you know, you go, oh, no, what's he going to do now? The newsletter will automatically send you every time we upload a new video to YouTube, shorts or long form. We got it hooked up so it does that. Plus, I'm going to give you some really crazy reports. I'm going to tell you what the reports are, and then, then I'm going to go stop my commercial. This one right here, it does not appear on the internet anywhere. Three top reasons why Noah's Ark must still exist. If you are a Noah's Ark fan... That's a must-have, but this one's even more. People love this five-page report, Is There Life on Other Worlds? Um, this one, you don't get automatically. When you sign up for the newsletter, this is, and I'm going to give you that URL in just a second, you get this automatically for free anywhere in the world. This is a five-pager, and I'll, as soon as I get off here in, just a, in about 10 minutes, I'm going to send this to you. Take a screenshot of that. I can't hold it up there very long. That's what you're going to want to do in order to get these two reports and our YouTube videos sent to you directly, free, no charge, anywhere in the world. If you don't like it, you can always opt out. So if you like, if you like dinosaurs, evolution, creationism, you want to see if there's dinosaurs in the Bible, giant humans, giant animals, giant plants, the pre-flood world, was there a flood? Was there really a Noah's Ark? I just got off the phone a week ago with somebody that just got back from Mount Ararat, went all the way to the top, peeked over the North Ridge. We're going to be meeting him down in Texas this next couple of weeks in Glen Rose. We're going to have a special, I don't want to say clandestine, but we're going to be having a special meeting of notables that have been up Mount Ararat. Now, the gentleman that I'm going to be uh, hosting introducing to you is Armenian and that's huge because the people that kept the ark safe and sound protected it knowing it was there were the Armenians until they were basically removed from that region in 1915 so that's in part what's going on so geological evidence of the flood hey apes aliens or Adam which is it when we show a fossil 
we can say that evolution says that this is 200 to 66 million years old. Creationism says this died in the worldwide flood 4,500 years old or ago. Two worldviews. They oppose each other, but they also, but they do agree that this is a Tyrannosaurus rex tooth and a fossil. They agree there. How long it took to create the fossil, when the fossil or when the animal lived, two different worldviews. And the alien worldview, well, that comes into play when it comes to technology. So, hey, and thank you for the likes, guys. I appreciate it. I want to show you another fossil. So you have T-Rex in, in Iraq. That is very, very cool. This is real. This is not a replica. And this is a fish. Notice that the fish is bent in two. Quite a few times you will see catastrophic or um, I guess ca catastrophe when these are buried that suddenly and without notice. It's almost like either they're trapped or in agony or in the death throes. You'll see one fish eating another and then they're fossilized. A dinosaurs or having birth and fossilized. Now this is not slipping in the mud. This is catastrophe on a level that produces a fossil. Fossils aren't easily made because the conditions are to, in today are just not the right conditions for it. You won't see. No, that's not entirely true. You do see things, but I don't have any examples of them. There could be fossils forming right now, but not fossils hundreds of millions of years or million years or 100,000 years. It takes a relatively short period of time to do this, but that's another, that's another program. So <clears throat> down in the Paluxy, down in Glen Rose, Texas, we're going to be exploring again things like this. This is a, a, a cast uh, impression. It was a cast and then it made an impression of a Acrocanthosaurus Acrocanthosaurus footprint. Just to give you an idea on size, <clears throat> it's about eight inches wide, eight inches long. Carbon dating, even by uh, Dr. Libby, who invented it, um, you know, he said that it's only good for about, in, and this is in um, evolutionary years, if I can call it that, 20,000 years. Now, in theory, it can go back to 50, 60,000 years, but he says it's really only accurate up to 20. Um, he knew that, you know, things can be contaminated and not all the time is it a perfect world. I am not an expert at carbon dating. I will tell you, though, that my limited understanding states that carbon dating is good for the, for the, for the first couple of thousand years. Beyond that, beyond that, there's other factors involved here, and I'm not a scientist, nor do I pretend to be one, but it's questionable. There's times, I have a special report where they took dinosaur bones and sent them off to a lab, didn't tell them what they were, and asked how old the hadrosaur, the three hadrosaur bones that they sent. They didn't tell them it was hadrosaur. Should be 66 million years old. They came back at... 20,000, 24,000, and 32,000 years. There is tissue found in dinosaur bones. Matter of fact, there's a special lab that's being set up as we speak in Glen Rose that is going to go online October, first week of October. And one of the things that they're going to be doing with the electron microscope that they have, and they also have a ultraviolet microscope is they're going to be looking for more fresh dinosaur tissue. And that's what they're going to that's one of the things they're going to be doing. So Okay, what else do I want to show you? Upcoming video. Do you know who this bad boy is? That is an Archaeopteryx. And the Archaeopteryx is what one could consider from an evolutionary standpoint as a transitional fossil or transitional creature. Allegedly, it has feathers, wings, a beak, and some reptile-looking 
characteristics. Let me show you what the fossil looks like. This is a replica of the fossil that was found in Germany in 1877. The first was found in 1861. Darwin looked at it and he didn't buy it. <laughs> That's what I understand. He didn't feel that it was a transitional fossil. I don't know why I've not read anything more than what someone said about him saying it. But that was this was the second and look, doesn't it look like there are feathers right there? Were those faked? Maybe, maybe not. They believe they did some additional testing and found that they weren't faked. But is this like a platypus where it's just it's its own species? Why couldn't it be, right? Or is this a transition? You know, Darwin said that there should be transitions in all of the strata. It should be everywhere. But he said, sadly, there isn't. And he says, and my whole theory rests upon them being able to find transitional fossils. Now, some may say, well, what about the horse? You got the one-toed horse, which is what we have today. And then you had the three-toed horse, which is several million years old. And that those three toes, two of them fell off, and the one toe grew into the hoof that we have today. Joe Taylor, who wrote the book that we're going to be um, releasing in digital format, we're the only ones who are going to have permission to do that, wrote a book called Giants Against Evolution. That's him right there, good old Joe Taylor. He's a paleontologist. He was out in the field. He found one-toe and three-toe um, uh, horses in the same strata. They live contemporaneously with each other. I found that interesting. Look, I can't stay on much longer, but I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on tomorrow sometime. I'm just trying to figure out when. Anyway, I'm going to give you one more uh, shot at the um, our newsletter. Then I got to split. And again, our newsletter automatically, anybody who, who goes to museumalerts.com and puts their email in, will start getting our YouTube videos and our weekly email. You're going to be hearing about when we go down to Texas, our Noah's Ark Symposium that we're going to be going to. We'll talk a little bit about that. You'll be get alerted when we do long form content, which you will not find on TikTok. And you'll also get two free reports one of which is, and this is a five-page report, is there life on other worlds? I hit it from an evolutionary standpoint. What would life look like on other worlds from an evolutionist? And what does life look on other worlds from a biblical creationist worldview? They're both showcased in this five-page report. And you can get it by going and subscribing. If you don't like it, the cool thing is you can unsubscribe. And anyone can get this. It's free throughout the world. There you have it. The map behind me is just a, um, just a, um, a tapestry of uh, an old looking map. That's all it is. So, all right, I got to go. And I'm glad you guys were here. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for joining us. And those of you that followed us in the process of this, thank you very much. I'm John Adolfi with the Lost World Museum, where we ask the provocative and important question, where did we come from? Did we come from apes, aliens, or Adam? I will see you over the weekend. I will see you most likely tomorrow sometime. I just don't know when. You guys are awesome. Thank you. You guys have a great night. I'll see you again soon.